Good morning, and welcome to Washington National Cathedral on this Monday, February the 28th. I'm Rose Duncan Cannon for Worship, and we are so pleased that you have made the decision to join us for this service of prayer and reflection. Let us pray. Blessed Lord Christ, I commend myself to your care and direction this day. May I speak with your tongue, work with your hands, walk with your feet, see with your eyes, think with your thoughts, and love with your heart. Amen. Hear these words from a portion of Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say to the Lord, you are my refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I put my trust. You shall not be afraid of any terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, of the plague that stalks in the darkness, nor the sickness that lays waste at midday. A thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near to you because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation. There shall be no evil that will happen to you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The reading comes from the first chapter of the second letter of St. Peter. May grace and peace be yours in abundance in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything needed for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Thus he has given us through these things, his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may escape from the corruption that is in this world because of lust and may become participants in the divine nature. For this very reason, you must make every effort to support your faith with goodness and goodness with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with endurance and endurance with godliness and godliness with mutual affection and mutual affection with love. Today, on this last day in Black History Month, the church remembers educator Anna Julia Haywood Cooper. As a Washingtonian, I'm proud to share the life of one of our most notable and influential residents. Cooper was born on August 10th 1858 in Raleigh, North Carolina, to an enslaved black woman, Hannah Stanley, and a white plantation owner, George Washington Haywood. Two years after the Civil War had ended, she attended St. Augustine Normal School and Collegiate Institute, now St. Augustine University, a school for freed slaves, which had been founded by the Episcopal Church to educate African-American teachers and clergy. There she became an Episcopalian and married George Cooper, one of her instructors in theology, who was one of the first African-American Episcopal priests in North Carolina. Following the early death of her husband, Anna studied mathematics at Oberlin College, graduating in 1884 with a bachelor's in mathematics and receiving a master's degree in mathematics in 1888. In 1887, she became a faculty member of the M Street High School, established in 1870 as a preparatory high school for colored youth in Washington, D.C. It was later named Dunbar High School. There she taught mathematics, science, and Latin for four decades and spent five years as its principal. She was an active member of St. Luke's Church, the oldest African-American Episcopal congregation in the district while Alexander Crummel served as its rector. Cooper emphasized the importance of equal education for African Americans and engaged in a variety of issues, including women's rights, racial progress, 
and segregation practiced in the district at the time. An advocate for colored women, Cooper was in demand as an orator, and some of her most famous speeches were at the World Congress of Representative Women in 1893 and the Pan-African Conference in London in 1900. She helped organize the Colored Women's League of Washington, the first colored settlement house in Washington, and the DC Colored Young Women's Christian Association. In 1892, her book, A View from the South, was published, in which she challenged the Episcopal Church to offer more direct support for Negro members of its churches in their quest for advancement and improvement in a segregated society. She wrote, quote, religion ought to be, if it isn't, a great deal more than mere gratification of the instinct for worship linked with the straight teaching of irreproachable credos. Religion must be life made true and life is action, growth, development, begun now and ending never, end quote. In 1911, Cooper began studying part-time for a doctoral degree, and in 1925, at the age of 67, she became the fourth African-American woman to complete a doctorate granted by the University of Paris, having written her dissertation on slavery, and in French. It was published in English as Slavery and the French Revolutionists from 1788 to 1805. From 1930 to 1942, she served as the president of the Freeling Hewson University in the district, a night school composed of a group of community schools for the city's poor and working class colored residents. Cooper lived in the historic Leedroid Park section of Northwest Washington, a neighborhood that became the center for black intellectuals nestled in the shadow of Howard University. She died on February 27th, 1964, at the age of 105. Her home in Leedroy Park was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1974, and it is now part of the African American Heritage Trail. Almighty God, who inspired your servant Anna Julia Haywood Cooper with the love of learning and the skill of teaching. Enlighten us more and more through the discipline of learning and deepen our commitment to the education of all your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. In faith, let us offer our prayers to God. That the rest of this day may be holy, peaceful, and full of your presence, we pray to you, O Lord, that the work we will do and the people we meet today may bring us closer to you, we pray to you, O Lord, that we may hear and respond to your call to peace and justice and challenge prejudice and discrimination in our world, we pray to you, O Lord, that we may resist the urge to protect ourselves at the expense of others. We pray to you, O Lord, that you will sustain the faith and hope of those who are lonely, oppressed, and anxious. We pray to you, O Lord, that you will strengthen us in your service and fill our hearts with longing for your kingdom. We pray to you, O Lord. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Compassionate God, who sent Jesus Christ to deliver us from all manner of injustices and inequalities, 
create in us new hearts and enlarged visions to see the image of God in every person, irrespective of background, race, and ethnicity. May we be generous in our love of others as we work toward ending misunderstanding, racism, and injustice, creating communities of human flourishing through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.